All right, today we're going to talk about uh, abandoned cart, and this is something that we've been talking about uh, quite a bit lately, and it's been on our radar for a while. Uh, but I brought in some of the folks that have been working on this: uh, Rebecca Stoner, Kristen Connors, Kurt Kinsherf, uh, I'm Greg Blanchard. Just to to briefly kind of go through um, where this technology has gone and what we've been able to do with it, and uh, and why. And so I'll start. Um, Kurt, do you want to set the stage for us a little bit on abandoned cart, what the market looks like, and um, kind of where why we were in a good position to really solve this problem in a, in a unique way? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, you, you know this is this is sort of the obvious marriage of the marketing cloud and the commerce products. Um, you know, marketing cloud being really good at, at the outbound marketing and email outreach, and commerce doing their thing with uh, ecom, obviously. So both sides of this functionality exists within one house right and i think that's you know this obviously exists in the marketplace there's lots of third party abandoned cart type uh you know uh, programs out there uh providers out there uh there's obviously a lot of econ platforms but um no one's doing both of those things well necessarily you know we've all seen you know abandoned cart emails that are very clearly just sort of an out of the box solution um that you know fire off and they're they're fine you know but we have both of these things that, that we excel at so it was a natural uh progression of us to be able to do this uh all the data flows seamlessly there's no integrations to deal with this is all like i said all under one roof you made a really good point kurt in that some of these companies are, are trying their best it's not like this their fault they're just limited by integrations you know integrations that were yeah. not built for abandoned cart or for some of these things so yeah rebecca do you want to jump into kind of our um our integration and, and what we've done that gives us the opportunity to, to do a little more detailed and, and sophisticated stuff yeah absolutely um like kurt said we're really excited about this new functionality and just feel like we're able to leverage that connection between commerce and marketing cloud in a really powerful way so i'll dive in and give a little bit more details on just that flow of data um so we have all the necessary details to be able to execute these powerful abandoned cart campaigns um, that are these details are accessible in seven abandoned cart traits that are now available for all of our clients and so these traits um, are pulled into marketing cloud from commerce um, and it's always going to show the guest's most recent abandoned cart and we can use that data to you know then push out to the email campaign so I'll touch briefly on what some of those, you know, the details in those traits. We're going to have the agent um, of the abandoned cart. So if the order was created by an agent, we're going to have that agent name to be able to send like a personalized email from the specific agent. Or if the order was created via the web, then we're going to have that detail as well and be able to, you know, issue a more generic uh, abandoned cart email. We have the date that the order was created and abandoned. And so we can kind of use that as our trigger point. You know, uh, cart was abandoned one day ago. We're going to issue a follow-up email cart was abandoned seven days ago etc and then we have the event date um, so that's either going to be the event date of the activity or the arrival date of lodging that's really helpful in being able to segment creative based on season we have the order id um, that's one of the pieces we use to be able to send guests directly back to their abandoned carts online um, through the cta and the email or be able to use that as personalized content in the email if they are going to call an agent back they can really easily reference that order id that they abandoned um, we have sales channel which we use as part of that um, link back in the cta and then we have cart type so we can tell if the cart contained only lodging items only activity items or both. And this is just helpful in helping us understand the content of that cart. And again, be able to customize the, the creative um, that speaks to the specific content that the guest was looking at. And then finally, we have um, a product. Uh, we pull in the most expensive product from the order. Um, that is the intent of the order. So we can customize images. We can customize content in the email um, based on the product that the guest is looking at um, in that order. So lots of really you know, useful details there to be able to um, create really powerful 
and customized emails um, for for those abandoned carts. And I know Kristen is going to talk a little bit more about some specific examples. Um, but that data that data flow um, that we have now is really exciting. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you hinted at it, but just for those listening that are not aware, you know, one of the really uh, key points of Intopia Commerce is the fact that we have the online, the e-commerce interface, but also a call center interface. And those things are not independent. If you start something online, you get an itinerary number you can give to a call center agent who can look up exactly what you were looking at and help you through that. Or if you uh, talk to someone on, on the phone, they can send you a link to then go and book that on uh, on the internet if you'd like. So that's kind of builds on that ability to go both ways and you know mm-hmm. put people in the yeah. place that you want them to book. And I think that's another sort of um, you know speaks to the flexibility and the sophistication that this does allow, um, and also being able to send somebody back to their actual cart versus you know some of the more generic abandoned cart emails you might see out there where it's just like hey, you forgot something, but doesn't necessarily detail what those items are. So yeah, again, you know, the two systems being under one house really allows that max, both sophistication and flexibility, which is really powerful. So yeah. Yeah. Kristen, do you want to jump into that a little bit and talk about what's possible from the email side? I mean, I think that's one cool thing about Intopia in general is that we have people like you who are so good at email and we have all the data so we can build really amazing stuff on top of that the uh, the data inside the email. I mean, what what are the possibilities here? What what's some of the stuff you're already seeing? Yeah, the Asian customized abandoned cart is really really powerful, um, and I appreciate the compliment. But all of our account managers are very good at all this. So Kurt, Rebecca, <laughs> jump in here because I know you, you folks have done this too. Um, this one is um, a very cool campaign. It is for folks who called in and spoke to an agent but did not book at during that conversation. And this gives the um, the agent a uh, opportunity to reach back out via email. Um, and it really is the agent speaking. You can customize it to that level um, where the from name, the um, reply to address, all of that can be from the agent that uh, the guest spoke to. And in the body of the email, it can be customized to the agent as well, the agent name, as you see here. Um, Some other cool things you could do with this is really get the agents involved, right? Um, This can become their template. They can um, write it themselves. They can uh, suggest um, other itineraries to add to this. So other, um, other suggestions down below, like maybe they have itineraries of the area that they usually suggest. If they have some FAQs that they usually hear from um, from guests over the phone, they can pop those in the bottom of the template, um, and it really can it really can and does come from the agent that the guest spoke to. So, really nice personal touch that does um, really well ROI wise. Yeah, and this one was a huge one to sort of dispel some of the sort of overall hesitance to move to a banding cart program, especially from partners that have uh, you know, agent-based call centers. A lot of times those agents are obviously compensated based on bookings. So they've all, historically, they've always been really hesitant for these types of programs that didn't allow the personalization because you know, that was viewed as potentially maybe taking away somebody's booking and you know, their, their paycheck. So this was a really big one to get more broad buy-in for a bin car camp style campaigns from um, some of our partners who have agent based call centers. So really big one to get everybody on board. Um, you know, it, it does their work in the background for them. So it's a it's a really big one for the broader concept of abandoned cart in those types of scenarios. So yeah, and I don't know if we'll see it in another example here, Kristen, but I have clients who are doing these agents, um, these agent abandoned cart emails, but they have two options. Like you can either call the agents, reply to that email directly to that agent, or there's a CTA to continue booking online. So it really just gives guests both options and we can meet them wherever they're at. Um, well, so one of my clients that's doing one of these custom agent emails are seeing like 15 to 20% uh, click through rates, uh, which is which is really high. So people are definitely taking advantage of both options. To add to that for the call center CTA, if you can get a digital phone number, that's another really great way to 
track bookings um, that come from emails or this type of email, you can get um, a specific number, phone number just for these emails or just for your email program um, as kind of one level um, higher to, to get some metrics on that. And, and Kristen, talk a little bit more also about just what what you can do with the template. I mean, I think that's a really unique part of this in general that we kind of take for granted sometimes that with a lot of other solutions, you can maybe customize a header image uh, or maybe a, so the color of a, a button or uh, you know the primary color in the template, but you can't use your own template so it matches the rest of your marketing. Gosh, there are so many options. So you really have a blank slate, but just to give um, an example of, um, well, we'll do this one, the, the traditional return to cart message. Um, an example here is um, what we would typically do is using some of the, the traits that Rebecca talked about earlier. Um, we would group uh, by the um, order type. So do they book lodging or did they book or they, do they want to book lodging? Um, activities or both lodging and activity so what exactly was what not exactly but what category was their um their itinerary what are they looking for lodging lodging only activities only or lodging and activities both so that's typically what i would call a primary segmentation so we would look at that first and then the email template would be customized based on the order type and then um, from there, so that's kind of primary segmentation. And from there, the actual email template will be personalized with say the travel month. So the month that they want to book, um, the itinerary ID, I know you had that in another example, um, the dates that they are looking to arrive and depart like you have here. Um, so those are just some examples of one very quick way of using some of the personalization traits that Rebecca mentioned earlier. I really feel like now that we have these available, it's kind of just a, a must have in your automation campaigns. Like let's get them up and running. We can always add to it and customize from there. And I did just want to mention too, and I should have mentioned this when I was talking about those traits is these are ready to go for every marketing cloud and commerce client. And so, you know, we, we can turn this on immediately. Um, there's no, no additional setup needed outside of, you know, building the creative. Um, so these are ready, ready to go for everybody. So we we definitely encourage everybody to to get these going at some level. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Go, go ahead, Greg. I was going to say, like, this is this is the number one no brainer campaign now. If you're an, uh, an Intopia Commerce and Marketing Cloud client, this this would be the thing that I would do before all other things. It's it's you know printing money in the background. Um, it's it should be on no matter what. You know, and and to Rebecca's point, it should start simple. And then if you want to get more complicated, fine. But these these are ready to go. It's just really a matter of dialing in the creative and, and hitting go on the automation. Cool. Well, um, so far, I won't speak too specifically because you know, <laughs> our clients, uh, we don't want to share too much of their secret sauce. But the early results are are sincerely pretty impressive. Um, yeah, there are a lot of our clients that are using this that are in the kind of traditional know 10 percent range of conversion on these emails but we've seen some up in the 20 25 percent range as well and that's from a single email not even looking at across the series so if any of this is intriguing to you um, please reach out uh, if you are a current user of intopia talk to your account manager uh, if you're not head to our website use our contact form to uh, get in touch with us we'd love to walk you through uh, how it works whether or not your systems are ones we integrate with all those questions i'm sure you're asking um, and we'll be happy to, to help you out